In business for this morning, Securities and Exchange Commission finalizes regulations which will serve as guidelines for real estate investment trusts. On international front, Myanmar's top court rejects final appeal by jailed Reuters journalists. We we'll start off in the Ashanti region where the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, has recommended the reconstruction of the Asafo market after fire destroyed over 200 shops in the market. NADMO has also taxed the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly to demolish unauthorized structures in the market that impede access. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. Hundreds of traders lost their livelihood in the Sunday and Saturday evening inferno at the Asafo market. Firefighters were at the scene on time to douse the fire. But access to the market was a hindrance to their efforts. All roads linking the market had been taken over by the traders, making it impossible for any vehicle to access. Firefighters had to park fire tenders outside the market before pulling the pumps to the fire scene to fight it. This led to the spread of the fire to other shops. Assessing the situation, Director General of NADMO, Nana Ajmain Prempe, says there is the need to reconstruct the market. He called on the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly to, as soon as possible, embark on a demolition exercise to clear unauthorized structures impeding access to the market. When they got access later on, all the hydrant had been covered with an illegal containers. So the indisciplined part of it on our side, as citizens, is also bad. How can you use an illegal kiosk to also uh, cover the water hydrants? I mean, look at all this. So we are telling KMA that they have to bite. The NADMO boss indicated that they are in consultation with the Ministry of Works and Housing to distill strains in the market. The records are there that at any time there's rain, the place gets flooded, very heavy. And then with this water that is happening, that's exactly what happened at uh, Kwame Nkrumah Circle. And we don't want that to repeat itself in the in any part of this country. Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive, Osei Esibe Entry, is hoping the market will be reconstructed in earnest. Looking at the extent of the damage, there is no way apart from reconstructing the market. So by supporting KME and the local government also coming on board, as well as the Minister for Works and Housing also coming on board, we hope within the shortest time we will reconstruct the market for the traders. Meanwhile, traders at the Kumasi Central Market have started erecting new structures after fire raised their shops on Friday evening. And meanwhile, Kumasi Metro Chief Executive Osei Asibe Entry says he suspects arson after the Asafo market was hit by another fire the second time in 24 hours. The fire outbreak is the third in the Kumasi Metropolis in the last three days. be very blunt it is not just an accident that we are we are we are witnessing those fires it started with the central market which we all thought that it was maybe an, an accident that is why the fire has happened yesterday to a fire took place and today but now looking at the occurrences of it everything is clear that it is an accident People are behind it. So from here, I'm going to report to the regional minister, who is the head of the RESEC, that the team must be deployed immediately. That henceforth, we have to send security guards to be monitoring our market day in and day out. And from 6 o'clock going, people should, everybody should leave the market until further notice. I'm sending the warning to all those who have perpetuating this fire we are not going to tolerate them we are not going to tolerate them when we are all planning to develop the kingdom and to develop the city it has now become clear that we have saboteurs people who want to sabotage the effort of the government one thing we also observed was that the fire personnel had a difficult task in accessing the market 
All these markets are old markets, which we know there has been a lot of encroachment. That is the reason why the past government and our government have put up the effort of getting Kumasi a modernized market. So there is no need for traders to be putting up structures to block roads. If you block roads, if you block access roads, it means that you are preventing the fire service to move in when there's an eventuality. Well, away from the north, um, the Ashanti region, let's head over to the northern region where the Salaga Government Hospital in the East Gonja district has taken delivery of an ambulance, three incubators and an x-ray machine. This follows a story by TV3 News in July last year on the state of the neonatal unit and access to quality health care. Zubeda Ismail has the rest of the story. The Salaka Government Hospital was established in 1976 to provide outpatient services, pediatric, maternity, emergency, pharmaceutical and some medical services. The 100-bed capacity hospital recorded over 6,000 outpatient cases according to its 2018 annual health report. The facility provides medical services to patients from Salaga, Bandai, Nanumba North and South and Basa. It also recorded 19 fresh still deaths in 2017 and the surge to 25 in 2018, a situation described by hospital authorities as worrying. TV3 in June last year reported on the state of the NICU. The Member of Parliament for Salaga South and Savannah Regional Minister Adam Salifu Braima presented an ambulance, three incubators, an x-ray machine and 120 bed sheets to the hospital. He promised to support in improving on quality health care delivery. We are bringing to you two ambulances, one for Salaga, one for Blo area. We are bringing you an x-ray machine. We are bringing you three incubators, bed sheets. The medical superintendent, Mohammed Sharif Ibn Khalid, applauded the MP for the gesture. He called for more support since the unit will still need other equipment to fully operate. For us as a hospital, we are grateful to the minister and then to our MP. But these equipment are not the only equipment that we we'll need for setting up a unitary intensive care unit. We we'll need other gadgets like uh, phototherapy machines and others. So we we'll still appeal to other philanthropists and then civil service organizations who are interested in health to come and then uh, help us get these equipment to set up these, this particular center. We'll stay on health a while longer. There is a looming epidemic at Kolebu and its environs following the leakage of a major sewage system. Peter Carter reports the leak leaking sewage, which has taken over parts of the road at the main Kolebu traffic light, has been running for over two weeks without any attention from authorities. It was about nine Monday morning and the location was the main Kolebu traffic intersection. This reporter, who was on his way to an assignment at the Corlegono beach, was drawn to a sudden foul smell. A cursory look revealed dirty water flowing onto the road. This prompted Peter Kwao Adato to alight in order to trace the source of the water. Our search took us to a manhole gushing sewage water. The sewage water had spilled over onto the road with the associated foul smell. Two basic schools and a kitchen school are situated next to the gushing sewage water. Residents say they noticed the spill about two weeks ago and have reported to authorities at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital and Kolebu Polyclinic, but action is yet to be taken. Residents who declined to speak on camera feared the situation could lead to an epidemic if not attended to before schools reopen. Personnel of the Kolibu Motor Traffic and Transport Department, MTTD, on patrol backed the claims of the residents. The police said they find it difficult to stay at the main intersection 
to direct traffic due to the stench that emanates from the leaking sewage. Just as we were about leaving the scene, a herd of cows crossed from the opposite side of the road to begin drinking the leaking sewage water from the road. The Ghana Society of Radiographers has petitioned the Minister of Health to not send Sorry, the Ghana Society of Radiographers has petitioned the Minister of Health and the Attorney General to restrain the Ghana Health Service from sending biochemical engineers to operate radiographic equipment across the country. The association maintains the move by the health service is an attempt to put the lives of Ghanaians at risk while trained radiographers remain unemployed. Here's a report by Peter Kwawadato. <laughs> In November 2016, the National Tuberculosis Programs Manager informed the Ghana Society of Radiographers of the deployment of digital X-ray equipment for the tuberculosis case detection project. The project, the first in Africa, employs a software called CAD4, which helps in early detection of tuberculosis for early management. However, the project, which is an agreement between the Dutch and Ghana governments, did not factor in human resource to man the machine. Instead of liaising with the Ghana Society of Radiographers, the Ghana Health Service is set to have sourced the assistance of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority for a waiver to train people in only radiation safety on June 30, 2017. An intervention from the professional body saw the submission of the names of 45 radiographers to the Ghana Health Service for employment. But securing financial clearance took months, leading to some of the unemployed graduate radiographers taking private appointments. With only two radiographers accepting the offer from the Ghana Health Service after a long-awaited financial clearance, this compelled the Director General of Ghana Health Service to call for a roundtable meeting between all stakeholders to profess immediate, short and long-term measures. The Ghana Society of Radiographers, which is the umbrella body of all registered and licensed practicing radiographers, says the lives of Ghanaians is at risk with this arrangement. There was a timetable circulating purported to be used to train biomedical engineers to work as radiographers. And for this, the professional body felt it was a slap in the face of radiographers to train biomedical engineers for just 10 days to do the work of licensed allied health practitioners who have undergone rigorous training in an accredited... 10 days training does not make somebody competent to practice as a radiographer. So the patient has more rights to be involved in whatever examination or procedure that is being done on that person. Lecturer at the biochemist department of the University of Ghana, Dr. William Entry, is worried a four-year course is being compressed into 10 days. If you take one body area or one body part, even the finger, just small area, depending upon the clinical is what the doctor wants to see has his own technique. What we have to do for the doctor to see what he wants. Can you use then this to do all these things? And you see, the curriculum they have drafted, it doesn't have any clinical component. That if I teach you how to do finger, then I have to take you the clinical area, demonstrate to you how to position the patient. Each of these fingers have different techniques that we, we, we used to do. When we come to the wrist joint, we have different techniques. The Ghana Society of Radiographers has meanwhile called on the Attorney General and Minister for Justice and the Ministry of Health to intervene or they would resort to court to restrain the Ghana Health Service from putting Ghanaian lives at risk. Breathe in. Ah, when you breathe, you hold the air. Hello, breathe in. Ah. Out. It's okay. Well. And the ambassador and head of the European Union delegation to Ghana says effective audit measures are in place to ensure monies given to government by the EU to execute projects are used for their intended purposes. She uh, has lauded Ghana beyond aid agenda by government, which she says will strengthen Ghana EU relations. Youth unemployment is a major socio economic problem in Ghana and many other African countries. 
even though Ghana's growth performance has been on the rise. Young people between the ages of 15 and 35 make up about a third of Ghana's population. To help government address the issue, the European Union will in June this year launch a 20 million euro project to help provide skills training to empower the youth. The project is to help the youth to engage in viable economic activities in their respective local communities. The ambassador and head of the European Union delegation to Ghana, Diana Akonsia, says rigorous measures are in place to ensure policies pursued by the EU achieve optimum results. We audit our projects. Uh, we ask for very detailed accounts uh, and then reports on achievement uh, on the projects that we have, and we audit them after that they are closed. So there is a very strong control mechanism. Actually, there are a lot of procedures in place uh, that are so complicated that sometimes our beneficiaries are not very happy. But this is the reality. We need that to make sure, as you said, that uh, the money is going to good use. It's the money of the European taxpayers, and so we want it to go to good use. The EU head to Ghana pointed out that the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda being pursued by the current administration will ensure a more strengthened relationship with the EU. During these days, the Ghana Beyond Aid is going to get more definition because there is going to be a strategy to be published. For the moment, Ghana Beyond Aid is a concept and a change of mentality. We have to do it for ourselves. We have to work now not to depend on aid in the future. Well, we like this very much because uh, on our side, we're, in fact, we're doing the same. We're trying to, to have in the European Union the same mentality shift that the Ghana Beyond Aid is doing in Ghana. Um, we want to move from uh, donor-recipient relationship to a partnership of equals, which is based on uh, common interests, shared values. The aim of the project is to equip the youth with employable and managerial skills that would offer them decent jobs locally to stem illegal migration to Europe. Well, the Securities and Exchange Commission has finalized regulations that will serve as guidelines for real estate investment trusts. REIT. The REIT is a collective investment scheme that allows investors to pool resources together for investments in real estate. Since 2010, Ghana has been tagged as experiencing a housing deficit of 1.7 million units. But industry players believe the deficit could be more, with 200,000 units required annually to fix Ghana's housing deficit. Real Estate Investment Trust, RIS, is a collective investment scheme allows for investment in real estate by a person or group of persons without necessarily requiring them to owe the brick and mortar. Director General of the Security and Exchange Commission, Reverend Daniel Obami Tete, observed the scheme will help in solving some of the housing challenges in the country. If you like broadening the investment universe that is available. And there, 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 there are so many examples of other countries where the REITs have been used uh, to really transform uh, the real estate uh, sector, in particular the housing uh, issues. The Securities and Exchange Commission has finalized the regulations for the collective real estate investment scheme. We've worked on the guidelines, we've done some engagement with the market. We always do that so that the market's view is reflected in the guidelines. And we are at the point where we are ready to issue it as, as guidelines. In the 2018 and 2019 budgets, the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, mentioned the scheme and the SEC boss noted its importance. It's one of the interventions that would really help in uh, addressing to a large measure the challenges with uh, housing here. The Real Estate Investment Trust will benefit the individual in the form of returns through dividends and for those in the real estate business as a source of funding. If the portfolio in the real estate is good, then dividends will be good. Now, Jena FC carried a day at the third Omiya FM Easter football tournament at Jekiti. The contest is to spice up and sustain the momentum of the Easter celebrations in the area. Nine teams drawn from Jekiti, Ajena, Anyase, Akusombo, Kotobabi and Taifa. Johnny Hughes has more in the following report.
The two-day competition kicked off with Wembley FC from Kutubabi and Super Wonders from Taifa all in Accra. The other teams competing included Faith FC, Peace FC, Jekiti FC, City FC, Ajina FC, Enyasi FC and Akosombo FC. Every side played impressive football and gave their supporters a good reason to stay and cheer them on through the nine matches. After the group stages of the contest, six teams made up of Akosombo FC, Ajina FC, Super Wonders FC, Faith FC and Inyasi FC made it to the quarterfinals. At the quarterfinal stage, Ajina FC beat Akosombo by 1-0. Jekiti eliminated Super Wonders on a 5-4 penalty shootout. Faith FC drew with Enyasi FC on a 0-0 scoreline. And in a consequential penalty shootout, it was 4-3 in favor of Enyasi. At the semi-final stage, three teams qualified. Ajina was on standby while Jekiti and Enyasi FC faced off in a grueling battle. At the end of full-time play, it was a goalless draw. A penalty shootout that followed was 4-3 in favor of Jekiti FC. The final match was between the host town, Jekiti FC, and neighboring arch rivals, Ajina FC. The local derby ended with a deadlock after 40 minutes of skillful soccer. The two teams engaged in a decider penalty shootout for honors. Ajina FC beat Jekiti FC by 4-3 to emerge champions of the 2019 Unia FM Jikiti Easter Tournament. Prizes were awarded to deserving teams. An obviously elated captain of the winning side, Amini, pledged that his team will retain the cup. It's the third trophy that I've won in this year. So, I know I'm so we are hoping that if we get a little support, we're going to go high. Are you keeping this trophy forever? Yes, indeed, we are keeping it forever because we deserve to keep it. They have the bragging rights now and they've got this plus other goodies uh, from our sponsors to make this worthwhile. Johnny Hughes, Jackie T. Well, let's do some international news now. My mass top court on Tuesday rejected the appeal of two Reuters reporters sentenced to seven years in jail for breaking the Official Secrets Act in a landmark case that has raised questions about the country's transition to democracy. They were sentenced for seven years and this decision stands and the appeal is rejected. Supreme Court Justice so told the court in the capital without elaborating the two have spent more than 16 months in detention since they were arrested in December 2017 while working on an investigation into the killing of 10 Rohingya Muslim men and boys. Well, that's all for news for this morning. My name is Anthony Jackson. You will return shortly after this break. Oh, he's risen indeed and his love is amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing. It's Tuesday. It feels good to be back. Yeah, uh, work. take it to four. Yeah, yeah. yeah back, <laughs> Welcome yeah, back, to Accra. Yeah, back, yeah, back, yeah, back. But it was nice when you guys exited. I mean, you left the area and so the traffic was less. No, no, everything was calm. We I shall tell it. Bright what Oh, but if he can't hear. <laughs> anyway, good ah, morning. Bright was there? No, I'm no, no I'm not saying that. Mm. I'm not saying, but he was out of town as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So. But I wouldn't be surprised if Bright made it to Jackie's. Oh, no. For no reasons he, he, best known to him. But he wasn't there. But he's capable. Well, well, I, I, well, I mean, anything is possible. Yeah, he's anything very possible. capable of flying <laughs> over. Capable. <laughs> but I hope you're fine this morning. Yeah, we're doing great. I hope the Easter went well as you planned because uh, after the long weekend uh, we're back to doing uh, what we have to do so good morning wake up mm -hmm. look sharp and, uh, step out there and win that's but Johnny, all yesterday say. you gave us some feedback from Jackie but tell us what was on the ground how was that? <sighs> well I'll show you I'll show you a video mm. uh, a, a bit just about 45 seconds 50 okay. seconds of the crowd yesterday mm. and they were not perturbed about the nature of the road. Okay. They were not perturbed about the distance. They were only interested in, in the fun, in the fun mm. and, and because it was Media General on your FM that was putting it together. Mm. Amazing, mm. amazing, amazing. You, I have not seen that before. Right. I have not seen 
the crowd. The crowd is huge. We travel to go and do shows, mm -hmm. but this crowd, oh man, and they were never tired. <laughs> Jumping Energetic. So if you are the artist and you mount the stage, and you are laid back, mm. you lose you flop. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would, they would, they would away you. <laughs> away. away. They would, they would away oh, those you. are the so, times. So it was, it was, it was really fun. good. And I must say that we are grateful to uh, the chief of Jekiti mm. and his eldest, Nana Mafio Tuabeng, the, the third. Uh, Nana Unkwaso Edasepa and uh, all his, his other chiefs, uh, Tufuhini, Mpuntu Hini, all, all of them. Mm. But especially, I'll single out um, Nanakofi Wade first, mm. who is the, um, of from Asihini. Yes, yeah. of from Asihini. He, he, he did very well. Mm. And Nana Tilapia, they, they led us actually right. there into Jekiti to meet the, the chief and all of that. Nice. So, so we're grateful to mm. the people of Jekiti. We're also grateful to, um, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Sui Jaman, okay. uh, he promised accommodation and all of that, and, and he, he provided, he, he provided oh, them. Nice. So, so we're grateful to you, Thomas Alpimnyako, mm. as Member of Parliament for Sui Jaman. And uh, the DC mm. also gave us some goodies. Honourable Ejekum, and I he, hope promised, my share has he been promised that the road will be fixed okay, for the in next two trip. months. Nice. Because last year we went there, he promised us that the road would be done by this year okay. but now we see there's laterite on it okay. so by next year uh, he says beginning even in uh, July okay. June July so says know. by next year Easter you that's, have a well, that's good what road to travel on uh, the journalist in me couldn't hide it so when he came on stage to address the people I asked him that mm. question again mm. and he made that problem but the biggest mm. of all the we'll thanks hold him to it certainly sure the biggest of all the thanks, I mean, we'll say thank you to Priya as well. They were absolutely amazing. But the biggest of it all, what everybody who came from Friday, people came from Takwa, people came from Kumasi, people mm. came from Kwewu, Akosombo, Volta Region, oh. Tema, Ashaman. We had two teams from Kotobabi and Taifa and Accra coming to play the soccer gala. Wow. So the biggest thanks is to those who came Very from good. far and mm. near to party with us. Right. We're grateful. Charlie, yes, you, 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 you missed. Oh, I know I missed. You, no, 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 you missed. You I missed. kept, you, you know, trying to imagine what would be happening there, and I just didn't want to because I had tears in my eye. But certainly, <laughs> next year, by hook or crook, wherever I am, I certainly will make were, sure I join There were two the sets of jacket. guests that we had. Okay. Those guests, like you, you know, doctor, you don't like giddy giddy and things. Oh. Yeah, so we we'll keep Johnny, you. have you seen me out oh, of the hospital? So like you, like Solar, <laughs> those Radha, it will keep you. No, we if you kept, put me in the same bracket oh, as Solar, no, 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 that no. would be we a different. Kept, we <laughs> kept those people, okay. you know, at, at another place. Arms length. Yeah, it, it was actually out of town, <laughs> out of the, then we stayed on the ground with the people. But I would like to be on the ground. I like, I like the ground people. Can you survive? That's oh, I will. Question. I must survive. Okay. I mean, outside the hospital, Johnny, you should really, <laughs> we haven't had much of that. So I think this year, it should be an agenda. You, must, you must see the outside please, hospital side of me. Let it go on record that I <laughs> warned her. She said no. Anyway. I'll be there. <laughs> anyway, but on the show let, today, let, we'll let's do say, Let's say congratulations mm. to the Asantehini as okay, well. Yeah. Two, four, say two, two. Uh, the second yesterday was mm. the no two days ago two was days. a climax of the uh, his 20th, 20th anniversary, anniversary celebration. Nana, live long and do more exploits. We mm. appreciate your your kingship and and uh, we celebrate you in that light. But the chief no, imam will be hundred this year too. Yeah, he uh, celebrated this, it yes. on Sunday yes. at Christ the King. Yes. And so we wished him a happy birthday. But certainly another one coming from you will exactly. be in good light. Exactly. Happy birthday. No, the, the birthday is actually birthday. Uh, it's not belated. The birthday oh, is, is yet to come. Actually, so, so he, celebrated he celebrated with Christ the King exact, just a service. It's, okay. a, it's a season of celebration. Right. Okay. So, so is that, I think tomorrow or today. Okay. No, today they're then meeting. We might have missed they're the moving pick ambassador hotel. Nice. You know, the vice president, the president will be there. Hmm. His but that was a very historic, you know, um, event for him to visit the Christ the King parish. And I think for him as a leader, he's shown great leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he wants to make sure peace is what he is preaching and the unity fostering amongst religious bodies because really at the end of the day the fact that you believe in a different god mm. from who i believe mm. in doesn't mean that as human beings we can't coexist Absolutely. we certainly need religious that peace yes religious faith. tolerance so, is certainly needed but johnny on the show today we'll be doing missions uh -huh. teacher absenteeism is yeah. still a problem we'll, we won't touch we'll, on that we'll go to bola there's mm. a village called bola you know that stanley blue yeah. went up there he reported that the teachers 
were not going to school while the students were in school. Mm. And, you know, he actually found them on a, on a working day right. idling around. Mm. When we returned to that same place, the situation had not changed. The same. And I'm thinking, you're earning your salary mm -hmm. every month mm -hmm. and you don't want to work. I think we need to spread this to not only teachers, but very soon we'll have to look at it. And generally, I think the people who are posted to rural areas and because supervision is poor there, they tend to do things they want to do. Because I heard of a story in a particular rural area where a PA or a medical staff has been right. posted there. And mm. he goes there only twi once in two weeks. Really? And I thought, where's your conscience? Because if no one is even supervising, yeah. really, your job that you've been giving is mm. God that has given you the opportunity. Right. And if you're not willing to do it, mm. then why don't you ask not to be posted? Mm. And let's know your name is stricken off, and then someone can be put in that position. But if you do that, and someone dies in that particular rural area, how do you feel? Sad. What does your conscience tell you? And I think people have to live up to task, really. On this earth that we are, at the end of the day, we have God to account to. It's not about mm. you, it's not about me, it's about who has put you on this earth and what your purpose is. Yeah. And I think you need to make sure that if you've taken the post, because you're being paid, yeah. if you don't yeah. want to do it, then don't be don't there. Then there. you won't be paid. Yeah. Then we know that you're freelance, mm. you can do whatever you want. Right. But once you're there and your name is on the list that you're supposed to be paid for doing a particular activity, whether supervision or no supervision, you owe it to yourself deliver to deliver. Deliver on the job. And also we'll have sports, we have uh, some interviews, the paper review segment will come your way. But let me say happy birthday to Lordina Isinu. Kacheku. This is from your father, News in Kacheku. You're five years old today. Uh, Lodina, happy birthday to you and live long and stay strong. You, mm. you remember the young lady I met at TV3's car park? The young lady called uh, Ophebia right. who came from Akusombo yeah. and she said she wants to be like all of us. Mm. They came to Jekiti oh. with his mother oh. and a couple of them. They drove oh. all the way. Nice. All the way to Jekiti. I was like, wow. Then this, you must give them a shout out this, this morning. This is <laughs> it. This is it. So the Bosus, mm. um, Ophelia Bosu and, and uh, the Lotti Bosu. Her mother says she's Lotti. Okay. Lotti Bosu. So, uh, well, we appreciate all of you. Good morning. I'm sure they're yes. watching this mm. morning. We do appreciate them. Johnny, and I mean, when you get the support from your, your fans or people, viewers and listeners, of course, then you know that you're doing something good. And we'll keep doing that. We'll keep making sure that we churn out quality, mm. entertainment, mm. And you know, educative things for people to learn because I think we as the media have a very strong platform to be able to educate. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think again, I'll use this platform to tell young people out there that social media is meant to promote goodness. Mm -hmm. Really, at the end of the day, technology has come and it should make us better, yeah. not worse. So, when we're using social media for you know, trolling and trashing and mm. all manner of insults that's certainly not what we want to see in this day and age our generation for me what i want us to see is that the older people will not say they've left behind a worse generation right. if we think they are not impacting us which i think is false because they have often said they've, they, done, they've well. done well but mm -hmm. we have failed to pick up from yeah. where they left yeah, off and we have failed to even you know um, as it were, humble ourselves mm. enough to learn from yeah. them. And so they haven't made a mistake. We are making the mistake, and we have more, and so we should do better. All right. I think that honors lies on us to do better, mm. make sure we leave this generation better for the next set. I, I, I mean, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. If you look at the, um, the musical scene, for example, look at back in the day, they didn't have all the softwares that we had. But we're great, they didn't have, making great you know, music. Yes, but if, now, listen to the <laughs> lyrics. And listen to even some of the old recordings, Rambles, E.T. Mesa, mm -hmm. uh, uh, King Bruce and the Black Beats yeah, Band, Uhuru, or oh, you, or Sibisa. Listen, just listen to them, Uncle Mo Taylor and the rest good of them. Lyrics, now, compare good. that to mm. what we have now, with all the software, auto-tune, auto-correct, auto-everything. Nothing is working. And it's almost as if when you give us more, we do less. Uh, it's almost as if. Because, I mean, if they didn't have of that, course, I mean, if you have, better. If you have fufu with a lot of meat, you eat a lot of meat and leave the food. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, no, you should balance it. It should be a balanced diet. Anyway. We we'll take a break now. We'll return. There's more here on TV3 New Day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you very much. The Tuesday edition of TV3 New Day. And it's the, also the birthday. Larry Pa Kwesi Moses, our Bonaf original correspondent. He shares the same birthday with his eminence, uh, Sheikh Osman 
Nuru Shadabu, to doctor, uh, the chief imam whose birthday is. It is today 100 solid years of living. So, Larry, enjoy yourself and uh, be a good man today. Do what Winston always would advise <laughs> us to do, uh, Winston. <laughs> anyway, we'll start off with a BNFT this morning. The silting of Odor River, Kole Lagoon, begins. Oforiata stares World Bank IMF Development Committee on Global Developmental Issues. Build synergy to survive. GCAA boss tells domestic operators and nine more operators who are coming on board. Fishing sector growth shrinks again and equipping technical universities. You'd want to grab a copy of this paper mm -hmm. and get the details. The Ghanaian Times. President hails Asante Hine as a tool for celebrates 20 years on the golden stool. Dredge masters to distilled or door drain quarterly. It, it sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds in, well, Haven't we heard that before? Oh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> the Daily Graphic. Otumfo, pillar of development, according to President Akufado. And that's your, where you find a, 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 in a hearty smile there. The president used to be the lawyer for his royal majesty, Otumfo, say to do so. They have, they go way back and they go along, they've come a long way. Families of kidnapped girls disappointed in police, despite the fact that we're told that they know where they are. Uh, man caged 36 years for kidnapping and National Chief Imam turns 100 today, joins Christians in rare Easter service. That was rare indeed. <laughs> the Finder newspaper, Interfaith tolerance on display as national chief imam visits catholic church on easter otumfo warns political parties to shun bitterness and violence mahama enjoys Nkrumah's free education but is fighting akufuado's free hs free shs uh, according to dr balmia dr chambas proposes five-point agenda for peace uh, partnership he spoke at the uh, lecture series uh, put together in honor of uh, Otu for uh, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Dr. Sharabutu. Daily Guide. Chief Imam celebrates 100 years in church. Don't let politics divide us, says Otu for. And top general dies in Israel. Major Sanziri, uh, who used to head the NADMO, he's no more with us. Rest in peace. No room for negative NDC on free SHS. And Asantehine is an asset to Ghana, according to the president of the republic and i agree with the president should we talk about dredging no we should leave it yes you don't believe that we'll no. be doing quarterly dredging of the odor river i think it's a um something they want to do which is fine <laughs> but as to whether it will be done is the problem because okay. this will be the first time we've heard some a plan of a sort like this mm -hmm. and the problem is whether again it's a priority journey and for me until we start letting it become obvious that sanitation, flooding, and issues like these are real things that bother us. Mm -hmm. I don't think making these comments is enough for me till I see it. So let's see. Let's see. They've let's given see us, evidence yes, in the work. Yes, let's see evidence in the work. Let's see that there is some, you know, um, structural, or let me say scientific backing to how it's being done. Right. Because f even as of now, we see the rains come before the desilting happens. And so whether it's timely is even a mm. problem. And mm. so if quarterly is what they found out to be of good use to us as Ghanias to prevent flooding, fair enough. But let's not talk it, let's do it. Let's that's, do it. That's it. I agree. Let's not talk it, let's do it. Uh, promise, but promise plenty. Johnny, linking action. that with families of the kidnapped girls being disappointed in yeah. the police, I utterly agree with them. I am overwhelmingly disappointed. And this is because, oh, wow. Johnny, we said it. I mean, Bright was here, and I remember very well when I was saying that I'm disappointed in them because I didn't expect them to just come and issue a statement saying we know we where, know they, where are, they are until you've given them back to their families. Mm. Because what the families are asking is <coughs> for them to hold their girls. These are people who have left home, have been kidnapped. You told us you know they've been kidnapped. It's not like we're, we're not sure what has happened to them. Right. We know they've been kidnapped. As to whether they're alive or not, that's probably a different issue that they didn't want to put out there. Right. But if you come and tell me 
that my even my excuse me to say my dog mm. is missing and you tell me i know where your dog is but you don't give it back to me mm. you've not satisfied me in any way True. it's just giving me information True. which i know and probably i'm trusting god to happen right. and so I, I i feel weeks after this you haven't given us anything solid and you see because we don't have trust in the police already when you do this you give us more foundation to mistrust you and that's why i have a big problem with all these sittings that we're having with these, all these public fabrications you come and put out but you don't give us anything tangible to hold on to and i'm disappointed <sighs> and it's, you know it's, once it's Akra, when we went to tadi to rant we saw them displaying you know a painting of bring our girls back and i thought in this easter period why should they even be remembering such a thing yeah. by now they should have the girls home and be celebrating yeah. Yeah, but this is what we have. It's, it's painful, I mean, to, not to have your, your relations with you for a long time. You don't know where they are, what they're eating, they're teenagers. Uh, you can't be sure what they're going through. It, it's, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult it's and it's hurtful. So if the Ghana Police Service says they know where the girls are, I think it's about time they bring them in. And the other time, the conversation was that, or oh, if they know where they, Bright says, once they have announced it, then they know where they are. And I say, look, I don't doubt the capacity and competence of our police, but on this call, I think that something, something is not going on the way it has to go. If we know where the girls are, somebody has been arrested, somebody who broke out of cell mm -hmm. with the aid of a police officer. Mm -hmm. So the chronology of the incident as it happened, and I, even at some point we had to go and bring in uh, the British Fine. and Americans to mm. come and assist us to, that was when the guy was rearrested nice. and all of that. So if you look at the chronology, it doesn't inspire your confidence and give you assurance at that all. this can be done and dusted in a short time. But when you have the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department come to you and say that, well, we know where the girls are, then you know that, oh, you're almost home. So one would exactly. have thought that the ladies or the girls were in the custody of the police at the time they made that statement, and maybe they were going through medicals exactly. to ensure that they were safe and secure. But it's been a month or so. And what even scares <laughs> and me, the Johnny, girls are not home. was the fact it's that they said they wouldn't add any more information because it might jeopardize, you know, the safety of the girls. But having done so, and weeks later, we still haven't heard that the girls have been returned then safely Then you have jeopardized home. their you safety. Have. You have. And that's what I was saying. Until you have the girls in your grip, you don't even need to come and tell us that you know where they are. I think that was a tacky... Johnny, I don't want to even get into it's this It's okay. This it's the Chief Imam's birthday, so uh, we will, will play a song for the Chief Imam. Uh, the Chief Imam loves TV3. He loves us so dearly. We love him right back. So uh, if you're making your way to the Chief Imam's residence today, send our felicitations to the Chief mm -hmm. Imam. It's his birthday. 100 years of living on this earthly plane. It you no know, be joke. At all. It you no know, be joke. And then we all pray that we will we will grow to I want if to be If you are good like him. If you are good boy. Oh, but like me I'm a good is. boy. No, I'm just saying you said it, we all yes, and I'm yes. saying the other people too. But you I can trust. I'm talking you about the others. Compare me with Amando. Oh. oh, I didn't mean I said the others. You said we yeah, all. Yeah. Uh -huh, so I'm just saying yes. that all is a big group. Yeah, so if yeah. everyone behaves like you know the chief your mom and is a oh, good I, child. I have behaved. They will I live have behaved. Very to be hundred. I have behaved. <laughs> I have behaved by her, so... You'll speak for yourself. Maybe I want to be 102. <laughs> 102. Anyway, guys, we'll put a break on it at this point. We'll be back with Newspaper Review with Johnny Hughes and our guests. My nana. Welcome back, and thank you very much. We're getting to our News Review segment. I've been joined by my two guests. Lawyer Abraham Maliba is a member of the NDC's legal team. He also does communication for them. Council, good morning. How are you doing? I'm quite well. You are, you are not too well? I'm not too well. We are in an excruciating economy. The economy is biting. And so I cannot be well when the economy is not uh, treating me well. So that's why I'm saying I am quite well. But you look well. Yes, because I have decided to soldier on Okay. in the midst of challenges. I have decided that I won't allow the excruciating economy to put me down. Mm. That is the spirit. Stephen, Amwa is the boss at Maslock. Stephen, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Stephen, Stephen, thank you for having you? me on your set. Thank you. Stephen, how are you? By the grace of God, I'm doing tremendously well. Right. And I'll use the opportunity to wish mm. the chief imam, the great man, uh, happy 
birthday. Right. And I wish I could be, um, I could double his age. Right. God has blessed him so much. And also to say kudos to the Otun for mm. 20 years um, as a king, the great successes that um, as Antiman and the entire country mm. we have chalked as a result of his um, remarkable, illustrious, and um, great leadership. Mm. He's done so much well. So it looks like tradition and religion. Right, and absolutely. This is what we have to dwell mm. on, their role in our society. I think mean, they've done so much well. They've done well. And uh, Aziz Dola is watching from Wa, he says uh, with his family, Aziz, good morning to you. They will start off, um, Council, let's start with the Chief Imam. We saw him on Sunday. He did what many call the undoable, where he went to take a front pew uh, in a Catholic church, and he participated in the full service. We, we know that the Chief Imam is an exemplary figure, but this is a notch higher. Today is 100 years. What are your thoughts? Well, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. There's something you need to know. The Muslims see Catholics as their natural allies. <clears throat> when you talk to a Muslim one-on-one, -on -one, they will tell you that if they were to convert mm -hmm. into Christianity, the denomination that they would uh, convert into would have been the Catholic Church. So even though I never knew this coming, mm. but I knew, uh, I wasn't surprised that he chose the Catholic Church. Mm. This chief imam is naturally a man of peace. Mm. He exudes it. <laughs> you know, you look at his demeanor. It tells you that this is a, 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 a cleric whose main objective mm. is to preach peace. So when I heard that he had gone to the church to celebrate mm. with Christians uh, uh, as a result of his birthday coinciding with the Easter festivities, mm. I thought that once again, he has shown the way. Mm. Once again, he has made it happen. Mm. When I heard people criticizing him, you know, some people, <laughs> I don't know, uh, sort of made comments to the effect that as a Muslim cler cleric, he shouldn't have done that. Right. I thought that these are people who were speaking from an ignorant point, point of, of view. view. Mm. This act of the chief imam has even been commended the world all over. It was on BBC. I don't know where you heard it. This singular act of the chief imam. At a time when Muslims are, at, are being attacked in New Zealand, just yesterday in Sri Lanka, churches were bombed. At that time, when the, the, the whole world is seeking for answers mm. and seeing that terrorism doesn't know whether you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. Mm. At this time, you have our most senior Muslim cleric walk into a church and you have some people thinking otherwise of what he did. Does it, does it deepen interfaith tolerance this act of the chief imam, his eminence? I even think it goes beyond deepening the faith. What does it do? I, I think that it gives a signal to the whole nation that even your, your opponent, and I'm talking about politicians now, mm -hmm can still come close to you and you celebrate with that person. Okay. Stephen, step in for me. The chief imam is 100 and he's done what, and again I repeat, what many think is undoable. <laughs> he set another record. <laughs> uh, uh, he went into the church. 
and stayed there for the full stretch, you know, with, with uh, them. And some say this will deepen interfaith tolerance in this country. Is that an argument you want to agree with? Um, I think so. Um, it is something that all of us will have to actually give credence to. Uh, he's done something that is sending a signal to us as a nation and even to the world. I think the world will have to emulate what he's done. Um, I have been having a great deal of respect for him. Okay. And I admire him greatly. Not because only he is the chief imam, but I think he's somebody that exudes tranquility and harmony. And his leadership style seems to be something that actually diffuses mm. the misconception a lot of people generalize about Islam and Muslims. And what he's done, mm. I am not surprised because of the way I see him even from a distance, okay. the kind of person he okay. is. Mm. So I'm not astonished not surprised. at all. I'm not puzzled, puzzled okay. because I know he, can, he could do that and he's done it. Except that I think sometimes if somebody can master that courage mm. and boldness and bravery, anticipating the criticisms that will ensue, mm. and yet he moves beyond that criticisms that he anticipated. And he's a very smart man. He knew people would criticize him. But hey, a man of God, such mm. a great leader, is it about criticisms? Is it about attacks? Mm -hmm. No. It's about he trying to foster the unity that we need as a nation and as a globe. Mm. One thing that I will say is that it has to really deepen okay. our quest to ensuring that as a nation, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, okay. particularly the young people, we need to follow this huge example. We need to, because look, all over the, like the chief imam made the call mm -hmm. to the church that mm -hmm. he wants to celebrate his 100th with them. Exactly. And those who are criticized, I'm surprised. Is it not the same God? Yeah. I'm asking, is it not the same God? Let's look at even the Bible. Abraham and the wife and the maid, Ishmael and Isaac. What happened? Is it not the same Abraham mm. that God promised? Is it not the same Abraham? whose descendants are Muslims and Christians today. How, how, you understand what I'm saying? How, so we are one people, basically. That's what I mm. see. Because we, I can't remember, I can't really cook. Should this be the template for other religious leaders in this country to follow? Of so course. that we will not have of course. the kind of turf war of course. that seems to be you know, present. You, you know, my concentration was not on that. What you are saying, perfectly I agree with you. But my con hardly you see those at the top of these religious um, structures right. engaging in antisocial behaviors that will create conflict. I mean, even conflict, we have positive and negative right. conflict, but the destructive ones. However, the followers, the young people, okay. being Christians and Muslims, they normally forget about the fact that religion is about peace. It's about following the things of God. And it's the same God, except that the way other people, be, I believe I have to go to God through Jesus Christ. I wouldn't condemn any other person who thinks he has to go to God through. Other. But the fact of the matter is that God has certain characteristics that we <sighs> have to follow. And that is exactly the chief imam's role that he's playing in society now. And that is what we have to be very careful the okay. way we go about things as Christians and as Muslims. Right. And we have to lead this country. Okay. That thing has to also be transcends or tra sorry, has to be transferred into mm even our politics, okay. our socio-economic endeavor as a people to ensure that wherever we find peace and tranquility, wherever there's cohesion, wherever people are living together and living Christ-like life or godly life, that nation grows and expands. It's in the Bible. So we should be very careful. One mm. thing that I will end is that people should look at this and stop condemning each other, mm. that this church is good. This, no, I don't believe in that. Because look, 
go to say something to Ishmael's mother. Now, Ishmael, you, you, have preached, mother, you have preached enough, Stephen. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, we, we, we're moving on. Thank we're you. grateful. Your message is clear. Uh, Otum Force 82 on Sunday also made uh, a very categorical statement uh, as he celebrated his 20th anniversary on the throne, the Golden Stool. He says, Don't let politics divide us. Council, are, are we divided? And uh, the Otum Force call. Is it timely? But also, over the weekend too, we had the Yana. Ah, yes. Also, pay a visit mm. to the Asante Hene with his entourage. I'm told when the Yana arrived, mm. the streets of Kumasi came to a standstill. Mm. That is the kind of thing we want. This unity of purpose oneness, mm. no division. I have always said that we must always process what is in our thoughts before we speak out in public. You may dislike somebody, but for the sake of the greater good, you need to suppress those things. The Otun Four has always been constant in his message towards national peace. Anytime he has opportunity to address the nation through his, uh, uh, his, his own activities, mm. he doesn't shy away from making these points that go a long way to unite the nation. Mm. Indeed, he's had opportunity to, 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 to sternly warn politicians who visit him and mm. tell them not to take the people down the road of destruction. He's done mm. that. He speaks his mind. Right. So this is also a feather in our cap as a nation. Mm. What I have realized in this country is that politics is the one that is a dividing factor. Is it? It is. Why, why should it be so? Because the stakes are always high. Because of this winner takes all. Because some people do not get any work to do mm. if their party is in opposition. They, they, they labor to eat. They have invested everything in politics. Mm. They have not diversified their effort to be able to do something else. So that's why it is so divisive. Now, if you listen to Otunfo, what he sought to recommend was that we could engage in politics okay. and engage in it vigorously, but nonetheless ensure that uniting the nation is our paramount objective. He also brought a certain perspective to it where he said that we must not always wait on government to kickstart developmental plans and projects and that we all must get involved irrespective of who is in power. Oh, yes. He said, he said that as well. Yes. Is that a possibility given, given the history we have of uh, a new party comes in, an old project is abandoned, and a new one you know, is started and literally it's just about the same concept but we're looking at it differently because we didn't start it. And that when we complete it, it will go to the credit of these, these people or those people. Uh, this is what the two boys say. That one is a different argument where government change and uh, the previous government uh, would not want to continue with uh, projects that, as we are seeing under this administration. How, how is it different? What? you are talking about is mm. about governments but that message he sent mm. is to the individual brighten the corner where you are right the, it's the individuals who rise into government and they decide that yeah so that's a i don't want to continue this project that's even a larger though picture. it will inure to the benefit of the people and taxes have been used to fund those projects yes that's a larger picture the small picture he's talking about is that look you are talking about flats you say when it rains, your area gets flooded. But you don't clean the gutter right in front of your, your house. Don't wait for government to come and say, clean your gutter. That's at the individual level. 
But what you are talking about is at the national level, government level, where you have governments deciding that they will not pursue programs of previous administration because credit will come to <coughs> the previous administration and not them. And yet, monies that were used to kickstart those developmental projects are the taxpayers' money. Mm. And so, I think that, yes, if you broaden what he said, okay. you can, you can, you can uh, uh, say that at a national level too, some of these things are happening. Okay. But I think that, basically, he is saying that wherever you find yourself, okay. try to ensure that you initiate programs that will bring about the greater good. Okay. Um, an example is what I just gave. The gutter right in front of your house. Do not wait for uh, a, a, the district assembly to come before you clean your gutter. <laughs> All these things go a long way to ensure that we okay. have a nation that is prosperous. We have a nation that is forward-looking. But you cannot also uh, 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 wish away some of the arguments some people make. The, okay. I pay my tax to government. Right. Government collects my tax. If I see signs of what government use my tax for, mm. then I will also contribute my quota. Right. But once I pay my tax to government, mm. government has a responsibility to fix my road. Okay. To fix my, they, my, 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 my uh, the hospitals. Page, page three of the uh, Daily Guide, and Stephen, I'm coming to you now, it says uh, it, it, the Asantini talks about the relationship between uh, Ashantis and, and the people of the Anglo land. And I'd like to read what's in the Daily Guide. It says, using Ashantis and people of the Anglo state in the Volta region as a reference point, the Otofu said the cordial relations between people uh, have suffered in modern times due to partisan politics. Retracing history, he said the friendship between the Ashantis and Anglos dates back to 1824. And it says, sadly, the Asante said in 1865, the two states signed a pact not to fight each another. And, uh, each other, I beg your pardon. And sadly, Otunfo said some politicians have tried to use this hankering for political power to create unnecessary dissatisfaction among the two tribes, but insisted that the people should ignore such divisive politicians. And yesterday, uh, Togbi Sri was there, and Otunfo said, this is what I'm talking about. Why, why would the royals sign an agreement not to fight again as far back as the 1800s? And in 20... That was 1865. Yes. And in, in 2019, we have <coughs> some people still fueling it individually. Why? Um, I think... For political gain. Yeah, be before then... Um, my brother lawyer said something. He said that process what is in your thought before you come public. And as a lawyer who swore to make sure that um, his profession, he should have processed his thoughts about the economy today and what he left before speaking. That, that, that's good that's not for you to it. judge. It's for the oh, but he made, he made his statement. Can, so I'm can, saying can, that. can we make progress? But you know, GDP oh, from 3.7 doubled. Stevie, let's you know, progress. interest rate today. So whether he processed what is in thought, Stevie, only God knows. He said that anyway, let's move on. Ago. What you are saying that on the same program. Right. Anyway, sure. sure, thanks. Um, I always have a strong um feeling that as Utunfo is saying, politics has done us I think bad more than good. Really? Yes. Politics is supposed to rather make sure that people come together, build a consensus or the collectiveness mm. we need or the collectivity we need to build our society so that all of us can live okay. in harmony socioeconomically. Right. But people want to always use dubious means, not out of competitive edge, to derive home or build the needed capital and stay in power. And as a result, they use tribal card okay. to do that or to doing that. But today I want to say this, I beg you, give me just one minute. It is a huge misconception to think that somebody is Ewe, Ashanti, Nodna, and that. Do you know by blood, 
physiologically. There's nothing that will tell you that somebody is a ga or a way. Does they, the politician know this? No, I'm saying that there's no chromosomal or genetic that, evidence. That's scientific. I'm saying that or two first talking about politics. That's Does it. the I'm politician that. recognize that's that? All, what is what I'm Look, coming to and, it. and so when NDC, for example, says mm. Volta region is my stronghold, mm. MPP says Ashanti region is my stronghold, that connotation and divisiveness is created. That's what our two first talking about. Bro, the fact that I say Ashanti Volta is my stronghold mm. doesn't really illustrate the misconception that we are different people. But, but we know that the supporters it, think along those lines the supporters, sometimes. The fact that a supporter thinks that this is my stronghold doesn't really mean that we are different people. That's what I'm saying. Mm. But the politicians over-elaborate, misconstrue that whole conception mm. and get the young people into moving beyond just this thought of thinking. Mm. What I wanted to come home with is that in the olden days, years, hundreds of years back, mm. people were not traveling. Rana, if you pick three lizards, another three lizards from Greater Accra, leave three here, send three to the desert, okay. send three to the, into the forest. After 20 years, check their descend descendants or offsprings. They behave the same way. In the olden days, we were not actually traveling. We call some mm. evolution in, in biology. Right. So when the same organisms thrive in the same community for a long time. They behave the same way. Apart from that, we are simply one people. True. In terms of our chromosomes, <laughs> in terms of our genetic, in terms of our physiology, we are the same people. Thanks be to God. Development to some extent has now brought us together, said that now you cannot really differentiate between who a guy is or a shanty is, unless probably the dialect. So why do we allow the politicians to divide And us? that is where I am saying this to educate the young people that they shouldn't allow MPP, NDC, CPP leadership to use politics for their gains to divide us because we are simply one people. Look, mm. before I came to live, I came to live in Accra permanently, I think 2007. I must be frank. Mm. Before I come to live here, the stories you will hear about guns, when I came, guns are one of the people I love so much. Mm. I'm, I'm being, not that I'm, I'm pretending. It, ah, so this is what they said. A friend of mine who was Ashanti was brought up in a cry here, born here. He came to care in UST. After four years, he said, ah, sticker. So all that I was hearing in Accra, it's not the way. So it's like people try so hard mm. for their parochial interest, individual interest, over the social interest, to use these things to drop home political strength and capital. Will it ever stop? We have to. We have no other alternative. It is an inevitable demand. We have to do that because we are jeopardizing our own future. Hmm. Why do we divide ourselves? Uh, about, will it ever stop? This perception and divisiveness and politics of self-centeredness and creating barriers, will it ever stop? Well, let me react to my colleagues Ignoramus comment about not processing my thoughts. I so think come that with figures. I think that I you beg should. you, come with figures. I think that so you no, 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 no. But you I think that, say, you said I 40 think that, and, and, that, and that is why I said I don't go that, there. No, no, but he said it. Why he that, said it? I should I, speak. I'll I, speak about it again. I, I think that <laughs> it was born out of the penchant for not being tolerant. I don't need figures to know that oh. this morning I couldn't eat food. As a lawyer? Look at look how he's talking okay. about. Okay, oh, gentlemen, uh, as a I priest, mean, as oh. a priest, gentlemen, okay, as a priest. I'm all about. I think you're as a as a as a as a as a priest. As a priest. As a priest. As gentlemen, this, gentlemen, this, we this, spoke this, we spoke this about ignorant <laughs> comments. <laughs> you, we spoke ignoramus comments. Gentlemen, <laughs> must be stopped. We spoke about on the issue. As a lawyer, you put up this behavior on set. Now you don't need figures to know the economy. You, I think you should correct him. Please, you what? I think he is rather suffering from unconscious. Is, he doesn't even know what he's doing. What, what, he's displaying his ego. You are disrespecting my you, viewers. Ask him to keep oh, quiet? Are you saying this to me? When he said I'm ignorant, I said, I will ask him You to are wow. disrespecting my viewers. Wow. Now, you said, sorry. You said, thank you. Now, okay, let him now, you have spoken. Let him use ignorance now, and you are saying that I am disrespecting now, the, uh, now, the, the viewers. Now, this, is, this is a big now, surprise. Uh, 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 do, forget about what is happening. Let's, Thank you. let's move on to what uh, you, are, you are asking. Yeah, it will help you anyway. The, the issue 
has to do with the fact that the Asante Hines <laughs> comment was a comment that was to all politicians. Right. Now, if you are a politician and you are guilty of what he has said, it only means that we need to amend our ways. Mm -hmm. It only means that um, clearly the people out there are not happy or interested in your kind of politics. Now, divisive politics, and to that extent, using ethnocentric behavior to gain political points mm -hmm. is what the Asantehini sought to make clear that, look, there has been some allegations or some behavior okay. from politicians that suggests that the Ashantis and the Evers are not, are not in good terms. But we also know that there have been some intermarriages mm -hmm. okay. between the Ashantis. We are saying, of course. You say that I don't process my mind. So why is it, of course? <laughs> Gentlemen, please. You say I don't process. Ah, why is it, of course? If you draw him no. out, he will... No, but that's like, what I'm saying. When I agree with don't, you... Don't agree no, with I'm, me. I'm, I'm not... I'm, 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 this topic, I'm, I'm, this topic... I'm, 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 this you're also ruining my program. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. So keep... Yes. keep I don't, I'm mm. not talking to you. I'm talking to the viewers. So the viewers will ascertain <laughs> what is happening. So you have intermarriages like, yeah. between the yes, ethnic groups. These intermarriages have resulted into children. Now, it is depressing sometimes... If you are a child of any of the two, mm. and you find that you go to one side, you go to your uncle, and comments are made that are disparaging. Okay. And I think that increasingly, because of the votes that we will gain as politicians, we continue to use ethnicity, tribalism, <coughs> and ethnocentric comments to continue to, 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 to as it were, divide these people. Okay. All over the world, there will always be a stronghold for any political party. In the U.S., there are strongholds for the Democrats and the Republicans. But, it, it, but it, that it does not tribal. mean... I don't know what tribes they have there. I don't know how they are coalescing. Okay. Indeed, in this, in, this studio, in this studio, your cameraman will coalesce if we are to allow people to coalesce towards one person here. You see them coalescing towards one person. That by congregating and supporting one political party, it means that they are at loggerheads with another group. No, it only suggests that this is a political party that can best serve their purpose. But the politicians would exploit that okay. and whip up ethnic sentiment. Well, there are instances when they will say that oh, if you vote for this person, when he comes, uh, he will target you people <coughs> and all those things. I think that time has come to heed to this call. Will it ever stop? That's what I'm saying. Time has come. There's always a point that you say, never, never, and never again. We know this type of politics does not, you know, bring in anything good. Mm -hmm. It never divides uh, the country. So at this point, if we have the statesman speak this way, what we can do when we are on programs like this is re-echo what he's saying okay. as politicians <laughs> and ensure that we send the message down to our people. I have followers. There's somebody who will listen to me. He has. You even have, because you are also not a politician, but you shape the views of people. Right. And so this statement coming from the Otunfo must be re-echoed by some of us. Give it a positive uh, uh, spin. Mm -hmm. And for me, if we continue doing that way, we'll get to where we want to get to our right. solution. We're told that... Uh, Can I say something about the chief transit? Or we have to move on. Oh, wait, no, okay. about what he said. No, no, let me, let me give you a minute to... Yes, to say. Um, I think we also have to understand the rule chief transit plays. And I'll use this oca occasion to say kudos to Tumfo because when it comes to dispute settlement mm -hmm. in Ashanti region, um, he's done tremendously well. Okay. When it comes to codification of our customary laws in the region, he's done fantastically well. 
when it comes to promotion of social economic development in the region, he's done fabulously well. He's done so much, especially in the area of education, mm -hmm. which is very key in any society for attaining long-term economic growth and stability. So I would like to say that, Nana, Ayuko, you've done so much work. Great. And he also admonished the uh, traditional leaders, other traditional leaders, to use their position to uh, help all of us to develop and not to be uh, misbehaving. Well, the final one we want to take a look at the families of the kidnapped girls disappointed in the police. The families are <coughs> of three kidnapped girls in Sekendi Takrani metropolis, uh, metropolis in the western region have expressed displeasure about the lack of information from the police concerning investigations on the abducted girls. They have also expressed disappointment and dissatisfaction at the pace at which the police are carrying out the investigation, indicating that keeping the families in the dark about the whereabouts of the girls is having a huge emotional impact on the family. About three weeks ago, the police CID boss told us that they know where the girls are. Subsequently, uh, MP for Second D was here, and he said, look, <coughs> if you know where the girls are, release them to their parents. Why are you keeping them? Now the families are up in arms again. They say, look, we are disappointed in you. It's been since November last year. What are you doing? Do they have a genuine concern? Um, I think, um, to some extent, I have a twofold reaction to right. what the family said. Um, if you say you know where they are, okay. how many months now? In that respect, the family, of course, their outcry right. is, is, is genuine and is warranted or is necessary. It is extremely relevant that they, they, they pour out their heart to the police. Okay. The other side that I think they have to exercise patience is about communication between them and the police. Okay. Because these are security matters. Mm -hmm. And in any organization, we call something asymmetric information management. Mm -hmm. When we say asymmetric information management, what it means is that it's not every stakeholder, be it internal or external, mm -hmm. that, is, that is supposed to be privy to every piece of information, whether relevant or irrelevant. Sometimes when you're privy to relevant or irrelevant pieces of information, mm -hmm. it will actually bring every effort to cost 90. So I think in that sense, they should exercise patience. Mm -hmm. But I think the police, I wouldn't say they are doing well. It's not easy. I mean, these mm -hmm. things happen even, they are more profound in the developed countries. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of kidnapping, in terms of insecurity mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they mm -hmm. are more profound in the developed countries. Right. They have better gadgets, better security system, sometimes even 15, 20 years. Sometimes swiftly they get it within a day. I don't know what the police are doing. So I can't say they are doing well or they are not doing well. Mm -hmm. But I will urge the police to upscale their performances and make sure that this thing, we can draw curtains on that. The family, they are going through a lot. And I sympathize with months. them. Yes. How can you give birth to your child, take care of the child to this level, and somebody just come in, a scrupulous person, a kept person, just come in, comes in, and then your child is there or not. You remember what happens in Nigeria? Mm. The, the, what's there? Is it Boko, Boko Haram? Boko Haram. Mm. What they did to them. And sometimes, if they, are, girls. if they are girls, sometimes they really met out to them. Mm. A lot of, I mean, aberrant behaviors that I wouldn't mention them ethically on your show. Mm. So we are begging the police. And it's not only the police. All stakeholders, those who have relevant information, pieces of information, they should do their best. Because I think the family, they are going through a lot. I mean, you cannot, I, mm. I wonder how they live. It, me, it would have been very difficult. The, the family uh, spokesperson, the spokesperson for the family says that ever since the matter happened, no single government official has come to them to empathize with them. And, and they say that they, they see the government has distanced itself from them. That's what the graphic is reporting. Oh, oh, if and that true. if somebody has come to if, if it talk is, to them, they if, would have... If it is very true, mm. sorry, if it is true, then it's very unfortunate. If it's true, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. I can't say if it's true, um, I will apologize on behalf of the, of the family, mm. on behalf of the government, mm. because I'm a government appointee. 
I'm saying if it is true, I'm making a conditional statement. A conditional statement, if it is true, I think we are very sorry. Because I know the government is doing a lot. Okay. I know security agencies that the president has been talking to. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, making sure that they, they, they find where these children are, they bring to book those who okay. are involved, okay. and the president is doing so much. But as the family said, the communication to the family, probably, okay. some of them will think because security matters. Mm. But for us not to go there, if only it is true, we are very sorry. And of course, better late than none. Okay. Very soon, they will see some of us there. Uh, Council, the, the disappointment uh, doesn't come as a surprise to many people. They think that, well, it's been nine months, they have a genuine call. But Child Rights International, right up here, is asking that the Minister for uh, Gender and also the Interior Minister be invited to Parliament about this particular matter. I, is that, coupling that with this, is that a proposal you want to support? In some serious jurisdictions, this would have resulted in the invitation of the minister to appear before parliament and to answer questions. And yeah, the interior minister yeah, yeah. to appear before the parliament to address some of these concerns. But the shock is not only from government officials, because I know the president has not mentioned this at all, has not oh, taken, not it's true, it's that's true. That's not true? It's true. Oh, please. In the State of the Nation Say address, you don't know. in the State of the Nation address, oh. uh, the, before the State of the Nation was, was, was read by the president, uh, relatives of this um, people, these uh, kidnapped children, were suggesting that the president should make statements to that effect. And so some of us were waiting to hear the statements that the president will make in ensuring that we find out where these children are. But to my surprise, the president did not, in the State of Nation Address, mention the issue. Right. <clears throat> Relatives, parents of the kidnapped children have every right to be apprehensive. They have every right to be concerned. And they have every right not to trust the police any longer. Um, the police... Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be an overkill? No, but if you wait for so long and you don't get signals, mm. that indicates that the people are on the job. Mm -hmm. It will come to a point that you would give up and think that nothing is happening. Mm. What I am shocked about is that normally the police are quick to deal with matters that touch on they themselves. Um, you, I think you were in this country when that uh, police training instructor, they call him, uh, oh, uh, uh, he was that instructor. Kweko Ninja. Ninja. Was killed and buried underground, and I'm told they even built a concrete uh, uh, on, 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 on where he was buried. Mm. But the police were able to get to the bottom to discover it. I do not see this kind of agency mm. that is required by the police being shown in this, in, this, in this particular case. I think that the police are taking it as and when probably people start speaking about it. Mm. But the last, what is it, the last press, t uh, co uh, press conference mm. that the police had on the kidnapped children, mm -hmm. I must tell you, it was one of the most useless oh, press conferences. Uh, I, I think, uh, uh, wh 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 why are you saying uh, that? If you are in the shoes of the relatives of the kidnapped children, mm -hmm. you, just, you just read, you just made reference to that statement and said that they said they know where they are. 
but uh, they will not show where they are and indicated that they are still alive. Uh, is the NDC involved in the kidnapping? They no, are still alive. Let, by let, now, no, no, let's, let's, now let's, you, I think, I think now, his point no, 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 is no, 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 no. Let's, let's now, not politicize this. Now, ah, you, you notice that president, now, you notice that there's not politics. Your intolerance is too much. When you are let's talking, I keep quiet. It's not everything. It's not everything that you say that I agree to. Stephen, if somebody mentions the president, it is not political. The president is a magnanimous benefactor. He is the father for all, and he is the president of the land. And what is chairman is extremely remarkable. What is this? What is integral part of our social community what, what is government. This? What is this? So you so want to politicize the kidnapping of the He is politicizing it. He is. Is that what you want to do? No, he is doing it. No, no, no. Wow. This is this that is, the president this, this, is even okay. mentioning of. This is sad. How come you say the okay. president is not mentioning of? This is sad. Come sad. Come Look, so finish your point. The intolerance <laughs> is is unbelievable. But the deception you, and the lies you, you, are too you much. Have, who, who are those who lie? You. You Kazo. lied your way to Kazo. power. Kazo. Please. Now, <laughs> the police must begin to show these relatives of the kidnapped children that they are actually on the beat. Okay. Because for, for a relative of a kidnapped child, they will want updates. And these updates must indicate what you, the police, are saying, that mm. you will soon get to the bottom of the matter. If you have a police uh, press statement or press conference come out to say that we know where they are, we will not uh, indicate close Mm -hmm. uh, uh, indicate to the public where they are. We are not talking about the public. Okay. We are talking about how to assuage the pains okay. and, and fears mm. of the relatives. So what is the engagement between you and the relatives? We are not talking about you and the public. Oh. You and the relatives of these kidnapped children. What, what have you been telling them? The information may not be for the public, I agree. But for the immediate family members, mm. What is the constant engagement? Well, maybe they're they not doing that. Maybe they are, they are concerned that if they give information to them, it will travel and, as Stephen said, asymmetrical. If you put everybody in the know, then you're jeopardizing you are the investigation. You're not putting everybody in the know. You have coded messages. You know how to, they, have, they have psychologists. Mm -hmm. The police service have psychologists. They know how to put out information which is critical but can be summarized in a way look is the i don't know whether you've gone home you've you've left home gone home uh, you've left the, the office gone home and your child has just stepped out and you can't find where he is mm. that alone yeah. what it does to you uh, 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 that the, the alone trauma the trauma yeah let alone nine months so the police must engage with the relatives we're not talking about the general public i don't need that information but the relatives must be engaged thoroughly so that you can assuage their pains and fears. That's what I am advocating. Stephen, final bite on, on this particular one. You, you say you are apologizing on behalf of the government if what the graphic reports that nobody has gone. If it is uh, true. If it is, true, it is uh, you, true, you are apologizing. I don't think it's true, but if it is true, okay. I cannot say it's not true. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is that we need the kids, the family, they need their children. Right. We need to do our best. Uh, one thing that I agree with uh, lawyer Amaleba is the fact that, yes, it's not every piece of information the police can actually communicate mm. to the family, but probably their constant relationship with them and managing their whole being psychologically. Okay. You know, we have psychotherapy mm. because these things can traumatize them, can put them in, in the state that the whole family probably will, will cease to progress. I mean, a lot of things in the family will be impaired. Okay. So I think the police, if they are not doing it, again, if, because sometimes they might be doing it, but not to the level the family is expecting. Right. They should <coughs> upscale their performance. That's what we are saying. I also pray to God. Okay. Some of us that believe in God, we think God can perform a miracle. Mm. Three things that we need to do. We have to pray. We have to have faith. We have to act. Acting all stakeholders must come on board. I said those who have relevant pieces of information. The police, even this time, we should we should let the army come in. We should let all of them, all the security we, agencies. We we brought the, and the then, Americans and the British to rearrest the the suspect who broke out 
uh, from the Takra this year. Oh, the government did that? Yes. The government yes. of today, it Nanado's was, government? It was, it was made public. Oh, that's fantastic. It was made public. So it means we are making the needed effort. Okay. But I think, as we a are after, all saying... After the suspect had broken out of cell with the assistance of a police officer who was supposed to be keeping watch over him, uh, that, sh that should be worries. Yeah, yeah, very. But you know that the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, we mm. had Judas. I mean, no system is perfect. No system. Look anyway. at the media. Some of you are doing well. Some are look at politicians, MPP and some of us Let's are check out some of the well. messages that so we have like that. this morning. And uh, Tilapia starts us off. Uh, Tilapia is talking about, well, national projects, political uh, rejects. And he's talking about the abandoned Saglemi housing project. And it's, uh, it's become a den for goats and sheep and chicken and everything. And the chicken, is, uh, the goat says, meh. Uh, a bit of relevant cartoon here this morning while we check out some of the messages. Anyway, so we're starting off. Okay, we're starting at this point. And it says, good morning, Johnny and your panelists. We all wish the chief imam a happy birthday and may Allah continue to bless him. Aram, Adenta Newside. Good morning, please. I don't know what you're discussing today because our lights have been off from 7 p.m. and uh, they're about till now in Banana Inn. There are times we enjoy light on for five, only five minutes within 24 hours. Please, if you don't, uh, if you doubt what I'm saying, send your reporters to our area and interview people in the area. Please follow up this for us. Thank you, Yakuma in Banana Inn. Congrats, Sheikh. Sharibu 2 on turning 100. You are a symbol of Islam, a true Muslim and a man of peace. Live for another 100 years to be an example to the partisan uh, Stephen Amwa and Abraham Amaleba uncle at Ato. Uh, I echo to for the case of today, a level of unity in Ghana. Congrats, Uncle Ato. Good morning, Johnny. May God bless the age of the new chief, the chief Imam, and may he continue to be a symbol of peace for all in this country. Gilbert Yimbil in Tamale. Aziz Donai Wa says, the national chief Imam has shown the way of togetherness, peace, and unique standing in Ghana. The question is, will our Christians now allow Muslims to marry our Christian sisters without victimization? Aziz Donai is asking. Uh, Aziz, I thought you were married already. And vice versa. The police rushed with their uh, press conference. They are talking too much, and I don't know who they want to please. Uh, tell the CID boss to stop uh, work and stop uh, the too much engagement. Result will speak for itself. Aram in Adenta News says, uh, uh, Madam, uh, keep to the work. We're, we're wrapping up, but this is a cartoon in relation to the subject under discussion and uh, we're just wrapped up uh, so tilapia says that tiwa savage so when as a question as a police officer a female police officer hanging on the ceiling and a gps with a phone it says madam our girls are still not back as promised or location change that's what tilapia is asking people are concerned about it anyway but thank you very much gentlemen for your time steven amwa is the ceo of maslock thank you steve for your time and Abraham Amaliba is a lawyer uh, and a member of the NDC's legal team. You know, Abraham, I'm, uh, thank you. Because I'm not a man of positions, okay. you know, I have my new position as a director of legal affairs. Director of legal I'm affairs. Not, I'm not bothered. Ah, director of legal affairs. affairs. If you don't refer That's to me, me as know. that, I'm okay. not bothered. Direct, I'm, direct not, of, I'm not like him who wants it. Director of the legal post. affairs. Anyway, me, when I are you back in court? <laughs>mission today we're talking about teacher absenteeism and teachers at Bola DA primary school in the Pandai district of the northern region continue to abandon classrooms for farming. Stanley Nibleri reports the fate of pupils hangs in the balance as they are not taught by the teachers because they are absent in the classroom. December last year the mission team visited the Bola DA primary school situated at a strategic location in the Bola community. The school provides formal education to close to 100 pupils, but teaching and learning is not effective, as teachers, who are the main stakeholders, do not regularly attend school. As a result, pupils are losing out. The mission team's investigations reveal that district authorities do not frequent the area to undertake monitoring activities due to the long distance they would have to cover from Pandai, the district's capital. This has given teachers the luxury to stay away from school 
and deprive pupils of their right to education. During our previous visit to the Bola Basic School on a Monday morning, pupils had reported to school in their numbers. However, there were no teachers at the school, and so pupils were whiling away instruction hours, playing football in the classrooms. At midday, when no teacher had still reported, the pupils went home. The head teacher, Abaraka Rahman, who was accused for allegedly embezzling PTA dues, later approached and wanted the reporter to kill the story. What are you suggesting? That I shouldn't do the story at all? So now we are pleading. That I shouldn't do the story at all. So that? That one, that one will not work. If any cost, we can bear, we can bear it. That one, to, to, we have been very happy. After TV3 went ahead to broadcast the story, Abarukara man was transferred, leaving his colleague, Brahim Afuseni, in the school. Two other teachers were then posted to the Bola school to support Brahim Afuseni to run the school. With this change, parents have high hopes in anticipation of improvement in teaching and learning, but this has turned to be a mirage. On Friday, March 29th this year, the team decided to go back to the school and ascertain what has changed since our first visit. Although afraid, the team still had to go. Riding for about two hours, the team finally arrived in the school. To our amazement, the team met an empty school as at 9 a.m. Our investigations in the community revealed pupils reported to school but they were compelled to go home because teachers did not come to school. Teachers of this school are constantly demonstrating the habit of not coming to school. Today is 29th March 2019. It's a Friday and pupils are supposed to be in school, but they have all gone home simply because there are no teachers to teach them. The pupils said, that was the second time their teachers had absented themselves from school in a week. We guarded one of the teachers, Brahim Afuseni, after shunning class, came for three of the pupils and sent them to his yam farm. This was confirmed by the chairman of the Parents Teacher Association. The teacher did not inform me before sending the pupils to the farm. We will ensure he's been sermoned to explain why he had to engage the pupils on farms. In the evening of the same day, the team met Brahim Afuseni in town with a friend. When the team approached him, he told the mission team he did not go to school because he feels a burning sensation in his heart, but has never bothered to seek medical attention. District Chief Executive for Pandai, Emmanuel Atta Tatablata, said issues of teacher absenteeism would be addressed. We need not to rush. We need to take our time so that we don't step on so many people's tools. In the attempt of doing the right thing, we don't step so many people's tools. You must step, but it should be in a gradual process. Pandai District Education Director, Nayan Faustina, is yet to visit the school. Achieving the universal access to education and lifelong learning in Bola would require stakeholders' commitment. The Ghana Education Service must also intensify its monitoring, especially in the hinterland communities, to guarantee equal access to education for all. Stanley Nibliu, TV3 News, Bola, Pandai, Northern Region. And that's coming from Bola Pandai in the Northern Region. But joining me in studio to talk about this very important topic is Executive Chairman for Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition in the person of Mr. Kofi Asari. Good morning, Mr. Asari. Good morning and good morning to your listeners. Great. Let's talk about this because it's very important that people understand what it means for teachers to be absent in the facility in which they've been posted to, particularly because your outfit is interested in these things. And I want to find out currently what the statistics looks like from your reports. Well, um, you know, nationwide reports from the National Inspectorate Board, there have been some research conducted by the World Bank mm -hmm. in the past five years, four years, and then also the Center for Democratic Development has done some studies in teacher mm -hmm. The last time I checked, 
in 2015, the, the, the Ministry of Education claimed that teacher absenteeism was only 7%. And that was uh, right on the back of research, for example, conducted by the CDD right. in Abra, Sebu Kamankasi, hmm. and then Trifu Eti Makwa, which quoted a teacher absenteeism at Abra, Sebu Kamankasi um, at as low as 50%. And so it tells you that the national data is always um, mis misleading right. in that it is skewed in favor of peri urban and urban schools where right. supervision is much stringent because um, there is easy mobility of the license and all that, mm. and the systems sort of work. Right. To the, um, against rural schools where there is more or less freedom because teachers know that um, the circuit of license you know, have a hard time assessing the schools right. much more giving them proper supervision. So, but the problem, I mean, does it only come to a problem of supervision or a problem of, um, I, I don't even know what to say, in the sense that if the teachers accept posting to these areas, then are we not expecting them to deliver, irrespective of, well, there's a fact that there needs to be supervision, but where that is lacking, are you still not supposed to be at post because that is what you've, you know, tasked yourself to do? The teacher absenteeism issue is a hydra-headed issue. Mm. The first head is that it is a product of our teacher deployment system. Right. We run a teacher deployment system where after college of education or training college, mm. you are posted by the Ghana Education Service okay. by default to a particular location. Right. Okay. So that is quite different from what happens in other um, more efficient teacher management jurisdictions okay. where after school you apply to a stated or advertised vacancy okay. that we need teachers in Bola and so when you are posted to Bola hmm. you are posted you are not posted to Bola but you are actually deployed to Bola because you apply to teach based on a vacancy announcement for Bola right you attend an interview hmm. and then you pass it means that it is dem demand driven okay. you the teacher apply to be there right. but in ghana teachers complete schools and then in the next couple of months they expect to be posted and block hmm. you know right. and so there's always the issue of did they go there will willingly oh, no. or they were compelled to be there hmm. now when they are compelled to be there because they need to leave make a living hmm. then you should know that you are beginning to create a culture of the teacher not having the heart the to be passion, there, but right. because of economic reasons, will so manage right. school and another um, um, enterprise. Right. That is what we, 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 we saw happening right. in, in the documentary. Managing school and then their farm, <laughs> because they know that the system is very laxic. They, they, they may not be caught because it is difficult for the circuit supervisor mm. to commute, you know, and visit all the 15 or so schools under his or her jurisdiction. So would you say that in the terms of supervisory roles, the Ghana Education Service has failed in being able to put in systems that for the rural areas will be so stringent to make sure that you, you're, I mean, by default, you're being well supervised so you don't have these other alternatives to livelihood? In fact, that is the biggest failure of mm. our system. The biggest failure of our system, right. the reason why there is a, a divide, a rural urban divide in quality basic education, right. especially learning outcomes, is because of the poor management and supervision mm -hmm. in rural schools compared to urban schools. Right. That is the only reason because you find that almost all the teachers are equally qualified. Right. The difference is the external inspectorate function of the GES. So you find that. In a typical urban um, area like, let's say, Akotolanti, mm -hmm. the circuit supervisor can live in Medina, okay. okay? But within one hour, he, he will be in school A. Right. He can visit three schools in a day mm. because mobility within the city is much easier. Easy. Or within a peri-urban area like Cape Coast, it's much easier. But if you go to a community like uh, Bole in the Pandai district that you're mentioning, you realize that the same circuit supervisor, supposed to supervise about 15 schools, mm may not even have a motorbike right. and if there's a motorbike may not even have fuel these are real issues mm. and so the challenges in mobility of circuit supervisors greatly affects the quality of supervision because they are the nexus mm. between the school right. and the district education director
But there seems to be this penchant of transfers. When someone, a teacher, is, you know, uh, mentioned as being absent from school, then the next step is to transfer you. Is that the best way to solve these issues? Yeah, you know, we have raised issue about the use of transfer as punitive mm. mechanisms, time without number. That whenever you use transfers to punish teachers, you end up punishing students. Mm. Why? This is a school that teachers were absent. They were grossly absent. Okay? Now, the apathy of teachers mm -hmm. has just been transferred <laughs> from to Bali another to another community mm. or another school. Now, if a teacher is that bad, a teacher is that bad and exhibits such gross um, incompetence or mm. apathy towards their work. Why should it, that teacher be transferred to go and exhibit that same character to another student? It is against the right of that child. Mm. But it seems that the Ghana Education Service is still using the very, very old traditional methods of punishing teachers. We think that as we progress as a nation, mm. we need to devise new and innovative and more efficient ways of punishing teachers who are absent, teachers who are not serious, than transferring them to, to go and be a negative influence on innocent students in another school. But from you, what would be the most advantageous punitive measure? For instance, the teachers, if the teachers have key performance indicators, mm. now to begin with, the teachers don't have KPIs. Right. Okay? So the, the difficulty lies in the fact that they can't even be held responsible to any set of deliverables. Mm. If they have KPIs, you can have the basic to say that, okay, one of your first KPI is that you have to be in school 99% right. or 99 days out of the 100 days, mm. mi minimum. And if you're absent with reason, okay? Now, if you're unable to do that, then if your promotion to the, your next rank should have been three years of teaching, you have to do it four years. Right. You see, promotional issues are taken much seriously by teachers, and especially by, by extension within the public service. Okay. And so if you tie their performance or the relation of duty hmm. to their promotion, they, they certainly will set up. Exactly. They will feel that pinch mm. rather than just being transferred into mm. another community, to community or school to be a negative influence on, the, on innocent children there. And so perhaps it is time for us to look at the, the, the sanctions that the Ghana Education Service makes out to teachers mm. who are absentee teachers. Mm. Certainly. And on that note, I don't know what else to say than to end with the words of Kofi Asari, who says that we have to look for more, you know, punitive measures in this day and age to punish the teachers who are being absent rather than transfers is certainly not the way to go in this current dispensation. I have been speaking to the executive chairman in the person of Mr. Kofi Asari of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, and we have been talking about teacher absenteeism. But on that note, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more here on your favorite morning show, New Day. Do stay with us. Welcome back to the show and let's get into a conversation because I'm sure you are aware by now that on Thursday we're having uh, a thought thinking, uh, a, a thought changing or shaping conversation here at the Executive Theatre. I've been joined by Kwame Uswansa, he's the Head of Tech and Innovation at Media General. Kwame, good morning. How are you morning, doing? Good morning, brother. I'm Strong doing man. Charlie. Strong man. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, I try. Thursday is going down right the first tech fest uh, ever yes sir. tell us about yes, it sir. um so you know right now cyber is everything mm. everybody's on the internet businesses regular people on social media you're doing right. your stuff mm. sending emails up here and there but it is predicted that the next world war that would happen would be a cyber war okay. and i think it is happening in 2010 mm. you would attest to it um that america and Israel teamed up to attack um, Iran's nuclear war program. Okay. And mm -hmm. that, that worm they used to attack them was called Stuxnet. Mm -hmm. And that was a cyber attack. And because of that, the world has been exposed to a lot of these things. Okay. So there are a lot of things happening on the internet, okay. in the cyberspace that regular people like you and me, mm -hmm. we may not know about. You may not know. And exactly. that's what you want to help and people so to So we want to, to get aware, people to, to be aware okay. of the things happening in the cyberspace. And I we see. want to look at how Ghana is preparing for these things because mm -hmm. the world is changing. Okay. What, what, what time, what date, what are we meeting? 
So the time is 2 p.m. The, when the conversations are going to happen is 2 p.m. 2 p.m. On Thursday, 25th. Okay. But before then, there will be exhibition, an exhibition where right. you have tech startups um, showing products and, and right. services right. here from the morning at 9 a.m. till okay. when the conversation So in the morning at night, we start with exhibitions. Exactly. People are showing what they have right. and what they have done right. to solve right. problems. Right. And then at 2, the speakers come the, in. The speakers come in. Who are the speakers? So first of all, we have um, Kojo Safumafo. He is the deputy director for cybersecurity at the NCA. Okay. So he would come and with some of the guys from the cybersecurity center, they mm. would talk about Ghana cybersecurity networks and okay. how they are protecting us right. from every other right. person. Right. And then we have um, Victor Gordon Yamadi. He okay. works at Vodafone. He is the head of cybersecurity solutions right. at Vodafone. So okay. he would talk on cybersecurity on the telecom side because right. if, if you are using mobile phones, you know that you can get safe mm. on the side as well. And mm. we have um, Pratap Jantua. He is an ethical hacker. Okay. And because he's a hacker, he understands how to penetrate systems. Okay. So he will tell you. Be a criminal to, 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 to <laughs> so he will be telling criminal. you how you can stay safe on your mobile phone, okay. how when you enter somebody's office or how businesses can cover their systems right. so that people will not be able to hack into I see. their systems. Is it for free? Yes. Free? This is a free event. Free? Free. You bro. lie. Yeah, I mean, cybersecurity is very expensive, but we want Ghanaians to get to know what is happening. So we didn't want to charge for you to come and seek knowledge. So just come to TV3 tomorrow at the Executive Theater um, at 2 p.m. or come at 9 a.m. and come and enjoy the exhibition and then get into the actual conversation okay. um, with all these tech um, gurus and geeks coming here to give us information. We need right. this, man. Okay. Kwame was once on Thursday, that's it. It's a yes, date. Sir. We're meeting at 9 a.m. TV3 Executive Theater. We're talking uh, cyber security. You can't miss it. And then at 2 p.m., the experts will come in, an ethical hacker, the NCA person, and a Vodafone uh, cyber security person as well. You can't miss it. It's for free. So just walk in. You don't need a ticket. Most of you have been WhatsApping and asking, oh, where can I get a ticket or invitation? It's free. We, we are generous like <laughs> that. Yeah. But I'm sure you know that uh, from Friday, since last Friday, the Easter weekend was fun at Jekiti. Take a look at this teaser. Small bite. Take a look at it. And that's uh, a bit of what happened at JKT over the weekend. Now, I'm sure you are having thoughts. Okay, why wasn't I there? Well, you lost out. Next year, we will, we will go there. But let me say a special thank you to uh, the chief of JKT, Nanu Beng III. He was very generous and to welcome us along with uh, the uh, Oframa Sihini and Anakofiwa the first and his new queens which will be installed and all the chiefs and elders of Jikiti. Also thank you to the Honorable MP for a soja man, uh, Ampem Nyaku. Thank you Honorable DC as well who promised that the road will be done uh, before next year. In fact it will start in two months. That's what he said. Honorable Ejekum. Thank you very much. And to everybody who came to support us, we're grateful to Origin, to Rush, to CJ Multimedia, and everybody who came to support us. Let's look at uh, what Tilapia has got to share with us this morning. And uh, this is the trending topic that's ongoing because 21 days after the police CID told us that they have uh, the girls kidnapped from Takradi in their custody, they have not been able to show us where the girls are. So Tilapia is saying, Tiwa Savage, so when? And you, you can take a look at the uh, video as uh, the cartoon as is showing now. Okay, it says, Madam, our girls are still not back as promised. 
or location change. That's what uh, they are asking us at this point. And uh, I'm sure we can also end on a very cool note. Let's say happy birthday to the son of Nana Kweku Edi. It's your birthday today. Uh, we love you and uh, we wish you a long life and prosperity. My name is John Hughes. On behalf of the rest of the team, know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it, only you can achieve it. See you tomorrow, Wednesday. Tindy.